Can we just go around the room to see where you all are with the boats, and particularly if there's anything that you want to look at, or if there's any questions as to why the boat is actually doing something? Um, one is, I mean, I've got J-boards, and something we mentioned earlier is actually uh, stuck in the J-boards, just like taking off. Right. Um, so it's getting to a point where we can actually keep them in the water. So as your as your boat's coming out of the water, it's keeping on going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's 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 fine. Also, having a lot of problems with uh, the lured hull lifting. Yeah. Dumping the uh, windward hull. Yeah. Okay. And um, also a uh, rudder angle as well. I mean, we were out in sort of medium breeze last Monday, and I've put a bit more rudder angle on, but. Uh, I don't quite know. It didn't seem to feel as good because I, I don't know if it was like pushing the front back down again. Or right. Okay. So to the general know. setup of you know, mm. all the Saturday, it, it feels like foiling, but I know I'm not because the chancels are just skimming. Yeah. You, you know. And then uh, strolled on Monday to get it going. We had good wind really, and then I just fully raked the boards back. And uh, yeah. Came straight. Can, 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 whether if it's going too high or not, I don't know. Can you keep? You can keep it up for 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 how long? Oh, it was just a few seconds. Right. But it was like first time. Okay, so it, it's sort of consistency of, of climate. That's the uh, what we're looking at there. As soon as you get the boat out of the water, you need to be able yeah. to keep it out of, out of the water. And, and coming in safely is a big one for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Been just been playing at it, sort of. And when so you can get your boat out of the water, yeah. But last time, last time I sailed here, when I, I sort of got the boat out of the water and it took off, you know, it completely came out of the water, the foils and everything, right? Yeah, which uh, so the same thing as Colin was saying, a bit of shock at the time, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, thing the two things I'd like to specifically ask, um, uh, and to do with. Uh, emergency recovery. So when the leeward hull begins to come out of the water, as if it's coming on top of you, yep. what's my emergency maneuver to stop that? Fight, yep. And conversely, when I'm bearing away and the leeward hull digs in and threatens the pitch fall, yep. what's, the, what's the emergency recovery from that? Fight, okay. Because I don't want to end up too often in the water. Yeah, okay. Um, so we'll, 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 we can cover all that under the sort of safety side of things that uh, if it does blow a go which the wind is starting to come up now um, we just want to be able to push the boat as hard as we can but then pretty quickly go into a safe mode so nothing's going to go wrong so that's that's no problem with coping with that. Right, I find I quickly think I ought to be, it ought to be going deeper because I see the same two down high as soon as they go a little bit deeper it tries to blow the lure hull out of the top out all the time. Yeah. Um, and if I, I mean obviously if you look, if I have a problem with blowing the boat both the water straight out of the water. Right, okay. even, the, it, even if I've got, had them down, so I've got negative, nothing on them at all, yeah. there's enough lift off and the blow out of the top of the water from yeah. the back corner. And I, I do get the feeling I ought to be stood further forward, but I, yeah. I ought to have a foot loop on the end of the track yeah. to keep the, keep the nose down, to keep the power on, because as soon as I step back in that back loop, it's, it's trying to get its barriers to clean out, try to blow the foils out of the water all the time. Um, right. Okay, what I was going to do to begin with is just go through a quick sort of process of, first of all, how to get the boat up and out of the water, and then how to control it when it's actually out and try and keep that consistency of flying, and then how to bring the boat down in order to go into a jive or to go around a, go around a little mark. Um, but I think probably the most important thing with what we're trying to do is from all the training courses that um, 
I've been involved with before, we were talking about trying to get the most speed out of the boat, which is more true with the way the boats are now. So the whole theory of how the rig and the sail works with all those telltale positions, that becomes very, very important. The problem that we have is that because it's new and we're all trying to learn something new when it's coming out of the water, when I was beginning, I was very focused in the boat in itself. So I think we're probably going to go through two or three different stages of one, not necessarily getting the best angles and the best speed out of the boat, but actually controlling the height that the boat comes out at and keeping it out of the water for long periods of time. And then after a bit of time, you, you're going to have the feel in your body and you're, and you're actually going to know what the boat's doing. And only at that point can then you start looking up and seeing what the, the rig's doing for you. Um, and of course the third stage is when it all becomes natural. So I think for the sake of today, let's ignore, in some respects, the perfect trim of the rig. Let's get it okay and just purely focus on actually what the boat's trying to do. However we set it up, there's a force going upwards from the platform. Um, that's what's trying to take us out of the water. So if there was no force coming down, the boat would just keep going and going into, into orbit if we've got a certain hull speed. So what we actually need to do is have the same force down from the rig. Now, we're really talking about going downwind here. So the vast majority of the, the force from the rig is near as damn it going straight through the mast foot down into the main beam. So the rig is pushing the boat down into the water. So I think some of the problems for people when they can't actually get the boat out of the water, and equally um, if they can get the boat out of the water and it keeps on rising, we just haven't balanced these forces. So in essence what we're trying to do is um, we want to get the boat going as quickly as we can to get as much lift from the foils as, as possible. Um, and then we're actually trying to get rid of the force coming from the rig. So if we simply took a third of the force out of the rig, the, the, this, the, the red line doesn't change at all because our boards are fixed and we're going at a constant speed. That means the boat's going to rise. Then as soon as you've as soon as the boats come out of the water, you've got to catch it. And I think that's what you were talking about earlier on, Colin, it just keeps on going. So, generally what I tend to do is, I'm sailing the boat as quickly as I possibly can. I'm not interested in the boat coming out of the water at that point, so I've just come out of the giant, just get it going really quick, to get the maximum amount of lift out of the foils. As soon as I think I'm going that fast, then, and only then, can I think about bringing the boat out of the water. And because we actually don't have much lift coming from the foils, we need to use both of them. So that means we've got to keep the boat absolutely flat. So if we said we're like this, if the boat's at an angle, we're realistically only going to be using one foil. So we have to keep it perfectly flat. So I'm doing quite a lot with the steering and quite a lot with the sheeting. So if I just draw a simple picture of the course that I'm trying to do to actually get the boat out of the water. Uh, this is the windward mark, and that's the space mark. Reaching along, and I'll turn down roughly to this angle, and the boat's probably flying a whole lot like we would normally do. Try and get the boat going as quickly as humanly possible. Let's say I get to this point here, and I then feel the boat is going as fast as I can get it. All I'll do is bear away and sheet out. So what I've done is, by bearing away and sheeting out, reduce the amount of force coming from the rig. So um, sheeting out is the most efficient way of doing it, because the more we sheet out, the more we lose power from the top of the rig. The bearing away means that we don't have to sheet out armfuls and armfuls, basically. <clears throat> so I've borne away and I've sheeted out and then straight away the boat is going to come out of the water because I've got 
nothing coming from the red. Mm. I'm still going fast, and this red line here, this force line, is constant, so we've come out of the water. Now this is the bit that I think a lot of people have when they just keep on going. And the way, the, the reason that's happening is, it's come out of the water, this force is still not equal to the red line. So as it's coming out, you've got to try and equalise the forces. So the simple way to do that is to shoot in. And what you're trying to do is at this point, here, which is, let's say, lift off, um, the boat's come out of the water and I've simply sheeted in. Now, what's happened at this point is that we've increased our boat speed, let's say, from 18 knots to 22 knots. So a fairly dramatic acceleration. Um, and sometimes sheeting in is not enough because this, the apparent wind has come around so much that if you just sheet in, the boat is then going to start rolling on top of yourself because you haven't got the force going into the rig to make everything equal. So at this point, I've sheeted in and I've also headed up pretty much to the same course as I was on before. So as far as the lift on part goes, this is really it. You get the boat going as quickly as you possibly can, then lose all the force out of the rig, which is a sheet out and a slight barrel out. We're only talking degrees here, it's not big arm pulls, it's small movements. And as soon as the boat starts to rise, at the point where it's starting to rise, you've got to judge it. So if it's starting to come out of the water and you're sheeting in your head up, the boat could plop back down into the water again. And then you have to start the process all over again. Equally, if the boat's coming out of the water and it keeps going and you catch it too late, you'll pop out the top. Because with these dagger boards, if, let's say the water line is here, when you start to sheet in, there's going to be a, you know, it, it, it's not a stable situation at that point. Nothing is, is balanced. So you're going to end up with a sort of a, a, the, the, the rising up and falling down. And as soon as the water touches the hull, you get so much more drag, and this is where our speed's coming from, we're losing all of the drag, then it will just plop that down in the water and you, you, you will never get going quick. Yeah. Equally, if you start sheeting in and heading up at this point here, you're too late. Because it's not instantaneous. You need to allow half a second, a second, for, for you sheeting in to have an impact of the momentum of the boat going up. So if you're sheeting at this point, again, <coughs> that's when you do the big jump out and crash back, mm. crash back down again. So what we're trying to do is, and all of our boats are different, is judge when to start sheeting in and potentially heading up a little bit to get that force back into the rig to make everything balanced. So if you timed it perfectly and you said that you were sheeting in at this point, the boat's going to rise and fall around this, but it gives you that margin for error. You know, if the boat keeps on rising, you've got another foot to go before you're going to pop out. And equally, you've got the same with the whole touch of the water. So it's, it's timing. You know, everything we're saying is your timing, generally. So as soon as you, you, your boat starts to rise, you need to make a decision. And you can't see it. You can't see this date ball when you're sailing. You, you've got to feel it. And I think generally when people say, oh well, yeah, I, th I, I think I've been foiling, they haven't. Because you're two foot out of the water and you've got another eight knots worth of boat speed to, uh, on the go. So if you think you're foiling, chances are you're sheeting in too early when the boat's rising. So you're equalising those forces too early and you're just doing that skimming part. If you do get into that skimming mode, you're on what I mean by the skimming mode, I guess that's... Um, if you do get into that mode, all you need to do is shit out and let the boat rise. Now, it's a tricky thing to start with, but really it can be quite safe. Because the next stage, well, sorry, first of all, is that, does that make sense? Does that, mm. you, you can catch it at the right moment. How much are you playing about these sheet than just like the fox or something? I, uh, so a nine to one main sheet, I think it's pretty standard by um, I'll have the traveller always about this far from the centre line mm. because when I shoot back in again, I'm 
sailing at land yacht, basically. I, I needed to be quite far in. But to actually get the boat to rise and to lose all of the, the uh, force from the rig, I'm probably sheeting out, well, if that's what I'm sheeted in, that's what I'm fully sheeted out to get the boat out. So it's, it's this without, yeah. without bending your body, because you want to keep the writing moment. Mm -hmm. so what's, what's that, a metre and a half, I guess? Mm -hmm. It's quite a lot, because the, the, the less you sheet out, the more steering that you've got to do. Yeah. And of course steering, it, you, you can do that. You can sheet out a fraction and do it all by steering. But steering is dragging and it's saving extra distance. Yeah. Um, also, with the way we've got boats at the moment, particularly when you're learning to, to control the flight, you want to make very, very small rudder movements to begin with. Um, because everything's happening so quickly and you can react pr pretty, pretty well with the main sheet. So I'm using as much main sheet as my body will allow yeah. and as little steering as possible. So if you said this turn here was maybe, let's say, three degrees, I've let out an inch and a half of main sheet. But I'm probably only doing that for a second, mm. two seconds. Because you've come out of the mark, you've borne away, the boat's popped out, and then you've headed up slightly and sheeted in. So it's not much, it's just the only reason you're making that turn is to lose the force out of the rib. Bearing away does that for you, sheeting out does that for you. If we had arms which were 10 foot long, we could keep saying straight down here. We could just sheet everything out and pull it all, all back in again. But then again, if you do that, you probably sheet it out too far. So the boat would actually start slowing down. So it's a fine line. But as a gauge, don't be worried about letting arm mm. falls out. Mm. You, but you've got to be sure that you can get it back in quick yeah. when the boat starts to rise. Because if you if you casually put it back in again and the boat's still rising, you're going to do the banister. Go to the wall. That's what it's called. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Um, the, the, the crucial thing is balancing these two forces. The lift force is always constant. This is the, this is the crucial bit. That really is the crucial part. Are you um, are you changing your fore and aft position and or bending your knees at all to help to, to get her out? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So between that bear away, in that the bear ease, away. Mm. the pot, and then back in. The thing is, when a, a lot of people do say move your body weight a long way back and a long way forward? I mean, the answer is yes, I am. But the most important thing is to get the steering and the sheeting right. All the body weight movement allows you to do is to sheet less and steer less, so it's the sort of fine tune on it all. So what I'll actually do is when I get to this point, so I'm, let's say, you know, we're, we're, we're on the back corner of the boat, for example, foot in the, foot in the back strap. Um, as soon as I bear away, I'll actually just lean backwards. It helps sink the transoms. The, rig, the force is all coming out of the rig. And it just puts a little bit more angular attack on the, on the dagger board. It doesn't put much on, and I'm actually not convinced by how much it makes any difference. But it actually makes me feel very secure as well. Um, and as soon as the boat starts to, to rise out of the water, I then will definitely step forward. Because when we're sailing in this section, we're using the whole waterline length. As soon as we get to this point, this is our waterline length, and our drag has dramatically disappeared. So the feeling of the boat will tell us that if we don't move away forward, you're just going to keep sailing along like, like this. So as soon as it starts to rise, my feet will normally be this far apart, say, when I'm leaning back and going in this direction. I'll then move forward a good foot. And that's enough if you've got the setup of the boat right to move your whole body weight forwards and, and trim the boat out. If you have to go from here to over here somewhere, that's a sign of actually the boat set up incorrectly. You should be a very small movement. And it's all down to losing this section of the water line and the, 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 the amount of drag that we've lost. But really, you don't need to worry about the theory behind it, it's just do what the boat tells you. If your boat's like this, you need to move forwards. Uh, so if we've assumed that we can get the boat up and out of the water, and we've caught it at this point, as soon as the boat comes out, we've, we've caught it, and it's, and it's going to waver up and down. For 
anything in up to 10 seconds. And that's the point where you need to be trimming and, and steering. I'll, I'll go through that in a minute. As soon as you've got through that period of instability, when these two forces are now starting to level themselves out, the boat is just going to sit there. And because these forces are balanced, and you keep your boat flat, you can go forever. But the key behind it all is keeping the boat absolutely dead flat. When you're flying at that level, that's the waterline level, does that make sense to a lot of this artist? Um, when you're flying at this high, the key is to keep this flat. So if the wind's coming from this direction, if you sheeted in more, you were sailing your boat in the normal way, it would heal this way. Does that make sense? Um, we control this roll with the steering. So we could do it with the sheet, but it, we're going so quick now, every tiny little change on the rudder makes quite a dramatic impact. And it actually doesn't slow you down a huge amount as long as you're gentle, as long as you're subtle with it. So the best way to control this is with the steering. So if you steered into the wind too much, this windward hull would start to, start to rise. If you bore away too much, the lower hull would start to rise. And all this is, is this balance diagram here again. So if you turn away from the wind, you're reducing this line, therefore the lured hull is going to start rising because you haven't got the force in the reed pushing the boat back into, into the water. Same thing can be true with, um, if, you, if you keep heading up, you're putting more and more power into the boat, so the boat's going to want to heel over. So the key to it really is keep it flat, and if the windward hull's rising, bear away. If the lured one's rising, You've, you've got to put more force into the rig, so let's say, let's say head up. Okay, so that's the sort of first rule. Second rule is controlling your height out of the water. And that's done with main tube. If you want the boat to fly higher, shoot out the main tube. Again, you're reducing the force downwards through the rig, and the boat will keep, keep on rising and rising. So, you need to decide for yourselves how high you want the boat to fly. I would say the higher you can get it out, the better. Because you have more margin for error, you know, actually touching back down again. Because I think the one thing that always we used to chuck me around the front was when the boat touches back down again, the deceleration is so huge, you get flung forward. So, um, the sort of stability on the side of the boat, I'll have my back foot strap done as tight as I can possibly get my back foot into. And when I'm going out, I will kick my foot into that back strap. So I'll, I'll actually physically have to force it back out again. It's in that hard. Because you're never going to pitch pole these boats anymore. You've got so much lift coming from the platform. You're never going to go bow in. If you, well, <coughs> I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so what it is, it's not actually a pitch pole, it's just the deceleration that, that fires you forwards. Then the other sort of probably quite important thing to say is if you've got your back foot in the toe strap, instead of having your front foot standing like you were playing a golf shot, twist your front foot along the side of the boat. Because then you're taking all the force through this main muscle group and you're not going to buckle your knee if, if the boat does decelerate. So the thing is, you need to be able to save the crashes back down because they, they always happen, this deceleration does happen. You've got to be able to save it. And just the knowledge that if your back foot stays in that strap, the boat will decelerate and stop and you'll just be fine as long as you hold on to the main sheet. There's, there's, there's no problem. I think in the past people have thought that, Christ, if I pitch pole this and I get fired over there, I'm breaking my foot. Well, it's not a pitch pole anymore. You haven't got these, these angles going on the boat when it all goes wrong. It's just a landing back down again. So uh, one real big point is turn your foot forward because then you can absorb the, the deceleration through all of your, all of your pods and everything.
Um, so steering is the role of the boat and the ride height is your main ship. If you want to fly high, shoot out. That's really it. But I think you need to get to that point. And I think the hard bit is when you're up and flying at this, this height and you've been going for five seconds, you'll go all day because everything's balanced out. And I think the issues here are actually the first stage in getting the boat out of the water. It's you, you're, you're either coming out too fast or not fast enough and the boat never balances out. It takes five, ten seconds of adjusting. So the boat's wavering around this area. And this is the point where I'm working the main sheet unbelievably hard. So I've just come out of the water, I've sheeted in at the right time, and the, and the boat's, the water line is sitting around this point here. If the boat keeps on um, rising, then I need to, to, need to put more force into the reef. So I just, I just sheet in. And I'm moving, like the, for the first five, 10 seconds, I'm moving this much main sheet. So if the boat, boat's rising too much, sheet in a bit, or it's dropping again, sheet out. And that's the key. It's moving maybe this much, just to keep that ride height level. And equally, if the boat's rolling on top of you, you simply just got to head up a little bit. Um, so that ride height is actually totally the opposite to what you expect. <coughs> the boat's coming up. Yeah. I actually need to shoot on rather than. It's this. This is if if you're going to take anything away from today, this is it. If you shoot in, this arrow gets bigger and forces the boat back down into the water. It's that that's what it is, and it's it's all to do with the centre of effort moving up and down of the of the, of the sail. But to begin with, that's. That's the answer. If you want to fly high, shoot out more. Um, there's probably one more important thing to say, and that's the type of dangles that we've got. So, Shura, mm -hmm. what would you say? Something like that? Yeah. Perhaps not as artistic as that. Better finish. <laughs> uh, yours are a, sort of a, this, this, and then that. Yeah. Is that right? You've got a tip as well, haven't you? Yours is a lot smaller. Near each, but thinner. Yeah. Your DNA, DNA J. Yeah. Okay. okay, so that's just a constant section like that. And your. That. Does everyone understand what I've just done there? They're the shapes of the boards that we've, we've all got. Yeah. Um, this really determines how much ride height you can get away with. So for Colin and Jamie, this flat angle here, and that's relatively flat as well, means that you do not want to get the waterline anywhere near this. Because if you get the length of the length of the angle to the surface, so if, if that's the balance point, if we drew a circle around like that, if you put your water line any lower down than that, that means this lifting section of the board becomes inefficient and you just crash back down into the water. So when you get the coming out of the water and landing, you're not necessarily coming out of the water, you're just getting too close to the end of the board, it loses all of its flow and rhythm. Um, and therefore it's lift and the lift just disappears out of it. So that's where you are, Jamie. Colin, you can see you need to float your boat lower mm -hmm. because you have a longer flat section and you don't want to get anywhere near it. Um, with the, uh, the, the J boards, you're, you're sort of, you can fly your boat higher, in essence. Um, so it's probably going to be about there, so you have this much much area and Bob we can fly ours here so what I'll be expecting to see when you all get the hang of it is that Colin you'll be flying perhaps a foot out of the water because the higher you go the faster it is because you have less ball in the water and also you can you can fly the boat closer to the lured hull coming on top of you because of the margin for error. So that's why you want to fly as high as you can. And it looks pretty cool. 
Um, whereas going out of the Jamie, you need to be uh, a little bit higher than Colin. Uh, Lester, you can be quite a bit higher than Jamie, and Bob, you can be pretty much coming out of the water. Um, <coughs> the, dif the difference in boat speed between flying here and here is massive. I don't know how much it is, but the boat just takes off again. And you've got to be really holding on to the thing. Um, purely because of the amount of drag that you are getting out of the boat. So what I would say is start on the casual side, you know, start shooting in around this point, and you'll do the popping out, popping back, popping out, popping back. And gradually, after five minutes, let it don't shoot in for another second. The boat will rise and you'll be flying a little bit higher. And find the point where you need to shoot in to keep the boat flying from the safe side. Don't go out there and, and just lose all of the sheep, let it come out, out of the water because you, you're going to hurt yourself, you might capsize, and you're not really going to learn anything. Start from the safe side and work up to see where you actually need to shoot the boat, shoot the boat into. Um, does, is that clear? Does that make, there's quite a lot to this really I think, but in a simple way, does that make sense to everyone? What about Ray Cankles and uh, Chris? The boards. I know all, all the boats are different. <coughs> really? What? With the rake angles we're controlling this, and with the, a lot of the time with the cunning we're controlling yeah. this angle. So, for me, generally when you're sailing up wind, mm. I'll let half of the downhill off when I'm going downwind. I'll never let it all go, all that go because we're going so fast. Mm. I mean, this is why we have the traveller so so close to the centre. You don't you want you want to promote twist to allow the boat to come out of the water easily, um, and you want a flatter sail shape. Mm. So you've got to find a balance point for for rake and for cunning yourselves because we're all different ways. We've all got different ways of doing things. But in essence, if you go downwind with half the amount of coming in that you had when you were going upwind and you're doing the nice S turn mm. and the boat's not coming out of the water, pull five mil more rake on the boards and go again. Mm. And if it's still not coming out, pull five more, more, more rake. Yeah. I've, been, I've been pulling it, pulling it all on. Pulling yeah. it, <clears throat> you know, probably at that point like 40, 50 mil yeah. the rake on. Yeah. But then I found him when he's getting windier, getting a bit nesher, I've yeah. just been letting that off a little bit. But well, the windier it gets, the faster you go, so the less lift you need from it all. Yeah. My bet would actually be, well, not the bet, the physics say, you've got too much force going down and coming up. Mm. And if you've got 40, 50 mil, that's a lot, that's a lot of drag mm. coming off the boards. Yeah. So I would start thinking, right, Let's say 40 mil is my maximum because yeah. the boat feels really draggy and horrible if I go any more like that yeah. today that I'd, I'd like us to all think about is when we're going downwind, get the boat going as quickly as possible, bear away two, three degrees, not, you know, we're not talking this, just gradually, it's all nice and smooth, bear away, big ease of the arm, the boat will come out of the water and then just start practicing the point to catch it. So as the boat comes out, start shooting in, and the boat falls down, wait a second. Next time you do it, the boat comes up, I'll wait for another section, and it might sit there. You've just got to find that balance point, but that's the key to it. And then you've got to shoot in and shoot out to get through that sort of driving stage, like a sprinter, mm -hmm. and then it all balance out. And err on the side of shooting out. You know, we've always said before, you're much better off to be over, uh, undershooting than overshooting. So keep easy. You know, don't don't feel you have to whack it all in at once and the boat just crashes back down again. Just play with that, that sort of, sort of balance. Um, Bob, you were saying earlier on about the boat rolling on top of yourself and you're not getting enough depth out of it. To me, I'd say that you've actually not got enough power going through the rig. Personally, if you haven't got depth, and the boat is all coming on top of you, 
the the obvious thing to do is is to head up, and I think that's what you do. Yeah. I think that's why you go so high. Do, how, do you let a lot of cannon off when you're going down? Yeah. You, you do let a fair amount off. It's fairly snappy. It's quite flat. Yeah. I mean, the, these are all rules of thumb. I mean, it could be that you need to let all your cannon go. If you've got a really flat saddle. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried that, but I can't cope with gusts. You see. Now, that's the other thing. I mean, it's easy saying that you know, if, it, if the wind's dead, you can do this. You can go. But now, what do you do when you suddenly get the gust? Exactly. Twice the wind speed. All of this is the theory. This is 15 knots, constant, no changes in direction. I know that I'm sound here enough to know what Rutland's like. And the biggest thing that I'd say, and in fact, when I was saying, when we came here for the nationals on the Friday evening, I went out for a sail. It was so gusty. Couldn't believe how much steering I was having to do to keep the boat out of the water. Um, so in gusty conditions, steer for your life. Um, it's all very well and good saying, yeah, let's be smooth with the steering and the ship and all that kind of thing. But if your hull touches the water, you lose 10 knots of boat speed. So I was steering an enormous amount to keep the boat out of the water. And also, you've got to be looking at where the wind's coming from. And you've got to so you've got a gas coming over your shoulder, you've got to have borne away a second or two seconds before it hit you. You know, it's like you would normally do sailing, sailing any boat. In the old days, before we were trying to foil, if we were scared going downwind, we'd, we'd bear away and probably shoot out. That's generally the, the, the safest way to go. We now know for this, if we bear away, the lure hull rises, and if we sheet out, the boat goes up. So it's all back to front. So now, if we think, Christ, we've got a 50 knot gust coming behind us, 50 knots I jump off probably, but if it's a lot more windy, <laughs> um, uh, what we actually need to do is still try and keep the force in the rig, but without the boat jumping out of the water. So, whereas before we'd bear away and sheet out, we've actually got to sheet in to try and increase the force going down it through, through the boat. Um, I said before we've got to bear away. The reason I said when that, before that gust comes and gets us, we need to bear away is because when it hits us, we, we are going to accelerate. So whatever happens, because we've accelerated, the boat's gone faster, I'm always going to have to bear away anyway to keep, keep the boat level because our, our hull speed has, has increased. So if we need to, if, if we're really scared, we actually head up fractionally, a tiny amount, not like two, two degrees, and really sheet hard. Basically, you, you, you're trying to put as much force into the rig as possible before it stalls. You know, if, you, if you hold on for it to too long, it's going to stall, and then you're just completely stopping in a race. That's that's not a clever thing to do. But equally, for a survival thing, if you really slow the boat down, and there's a lot of wind there, the, that's the tendency for when the boat wants to wants to pitch pole. So for me, you need to forget your years of sailing that you've had before. You've got to think about this this drawing. Um, I found that. When it moved slightly like that, the best way was just to, just to tweak it as a gust hit, just just up the boat fraction, yeah. and and the boat would try and lift, try and rear up, yeah. um, yeah. and take off, and just then just come off it, get off the wind again. Yeah. Do you move forward as well? Well, try to just throw my weight forward so I stop things flying out of the water. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think before you were saying, yeah, the boat wants to pop out of the water or what have you. I mean, it's set up. That's my barrier. Mm -hmm. He's set up pretty aggressively for it all. It should be very easy to come out of the water yeah. and just go. Um, so it takes man handling, and I think with all these boats, you know, the, the faster the boat goes, the higher the boat wants to wants to rise. Um, and you can make it make the boat come back down in the water again by stepping forwards. Mm -hmm. um, it's that balance between the, the you know yourself and the rubbish and the and the, the daggerboard. So. You're, you're, you're dead right. It, it takes a bit of a fine art, but you, your safe zone is you head up two degrees and then come back quickly. And for a split second, you just kick it and come off. Yeah. 
But you, you've got to move forward as well, because otherwise you do that. Yeah. 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 Take some weight off your feet. Yeah. So you're cheating in, heading up a little bit, yeah. and then coming straight back off exactly. the wind. Yeah? yeah. You're not like, bang. No, it's not. Like, turning well, up. You've already. got to come back when it was that time. Yeah, I, mean, I was only just, just trying a little bit. That's out. coming just, up to a line and it's just, like, whoa. Because if you keep <laughs> heading up, you can just go up like this. Yeah. So you, you're right, you head up and you come back. Right, yeah. Um, but also, that should put your lewd hole back into the water, mm. which is the thing. And you know, you, you're, you're a pretty good sailor if your boat's falling, you can come in off a while when it's falling and go into a giant. I think you need a bit more practice before you can do that. So what you were saying before about coming in safely before you go into a giant is actually head up, sheet in, boat come back down into the water, then bear away again. And because you've got that lured hull back down into the water, it's like we're saying normally, then you just, then you just, you just come in. Yeah, just ease out and come in. Sheet in and come in. Sheet in and come in. If you ease out, the boat rises. Right. If you sheet in, the boat goes down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just press that reset button. Mate, you try doing it when it's all the same way around. Right. Watch out, you've got brown trousers we need to take. Uh, it's going to be pretty dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, but I think for today, if we simply focus on, on, on the wire, fast as we can, turn away and shoot out, and catch the boat at the right time when it starts to rise. That's job number one, to stop this flying out of the water or crashing back down again. And then, when you're, you're happy that it's not going to fly out of the water, um, you know, just play with the point where you sheet back in again to, keep, to then try and keep it flying. Because if you, if you really focus on it, when it's out of the water for five seconds, you'll do it all day. The hard bit will be to try and get the hull back down into the water to go into the giant, in the ideal world. I think what we're talking about today is a lot of gusts, so don't be afraid to do a lot more steering than you think you probably should do, because the key is to control the roll, using both dagger boards to provide all of the lift, and therefore the roll is the, is the steering, the height is the mode shape. Um, so if we just go down, I think we've covered the, the takeoff, the lured hull is the steering, um, rudder set up, I just want to see how you're saying before we get into needing to change anything for the setup. Perhaps we'll do that when we come back into it with a debrief later. Um, the flight consistency is simply the main sheet and the roll. Uh, coming in safely, head up slightly, sheet in, bear away a bit and come in. Um, the close quarters stuff. One thing I would say on that is you got yourself into a bit of a situation when you needed to go over the top of something but you couldn't head up anymore. Simply pull coming on. Just, just pull the cutting on. Yeah. And you would lose a lot of the, the force out of the rig, therefore the boat would probably start to roll on top of you, so you would, the boat would tell you to head up. Yeah. But once you've gone round, remember to let it off to the right, to the right point. Um, the trapezing bit, I think you've really got to jam your foot in that back strap as hard as you can. Just don't be fearful of breaking your foot, because mm -hmm. if you come out of it, you'll capsize. If yeah. you don't come out of it, and turn your leg down there down the side of the boat. Um, we'll have a look at the VMG um, and body weight, you know, just do what the boat tells you. If you're flying, flying along like this all day, move further forwards. The, the real crucial things are practice the boat coming out of the water, catch it at the right point, and then shoot and steer it to, to keep it flying. That's all I really want to do for the whole day today.